Here we are at lesson 5.5, five, the greatest common factor and factoring by grouping. I have several examples that I'll go through with you in this lesson. Um, feel free to write them down or just watch, it's up to you. Uh, first thing we're gonna start with is find the GCF. Well, the GCF is called the greatest common factor. I have it before you, I have three monomials. And what you wanna do when you're told to find the greatest common factor, you're going to kind of break each monomial up a little bit to find out what is the greatest factor in the numbers? What is the greatest factor for the X's? And what is the greatest factor for the Y's? So you have to break this kind of mentally, you break it into three pieces. So start with, let's look just at the numbers, 32, 48, and 24. And you need to think about what are the factors of 32, 48, and 24? And what do they have in common? What is the largest number that they have in common? When I think of the factors of 24, I have one and 24. I have 2 and 12, I have 3 and 8, and I have 4 and 6. When I think about uh, 32, I have 1 and 32, I have 2 and 16, I have uh, 4 and 8, and that's it for 32. And then next I have, uh, lastly, 48. So I have 1 and 48, I have 2 and 24, I have 3 and 16, I have 4 and 12, I have 6 and 8. So now I want to look at all three of the lists, and what is the largest number that's in all three lists? 1 is in all three lists, 2 is in all three lists, 3 is not, it is not in 32, 4 is in all three lists, is six in all three lists? Yes, it is. Is eight? Eight is in all three lists. Now I have 12. Is 12 in all three lists? No, it's only in two of them. 16 is only in two. 24 is only in two. 32 is in one and 48 is in one. So what is the number that I said was the largest that's in all three lists? That would be right here. It's eight. Eight is the large, what we would say then is the greatest common factor that is in all three lists. So in my answer then, I'm going to be saying that on the numerical part, eight is the num numer a number that's the largest factor. The next step then is let's look at the X variable. I have an X to the fourth. I have an X to the third. And I have no x over here on my third monomial. And since there is no x on the third monomial, that means there is not a common factor between the three, polyno three monomials of x. So I will not have an x down here in my greatest common factor part. Lastly, I want to look at my factors of y. I have y squared, I have y, and I have y squared again. Keep in mind y squared is the same as y times y. So when I look here, what is the greatest common factor? I have a y squared, a plain y and y squared. Well, that means only y itself, the plain y, is the common factor. There's only one y with an exponent of one, and this could have an exponent of one here. That is the common factor. So the greatest common factor of the three monomials then is eight y. That means there is a factor of eight y in each of these three monomials. Moving on. Factoring a polynomial, they would need this idea of finding a greatest common factor to help us factor polynomials. What I have in front of you now on the screen is a binomial and a trinomial. So what we have to do is find the greatest common factor and we'll factor that out. Now, what we're looking for when we factor polynomials is what did this look like before this factor was distributed. So in other words, when we are factoring a polynomial, another word for that would be this, we are on distributing. Another way is, is a way for me to tell you to look at that. It's on distribute. Now that's not an official mathematic term, but it is a good way to remember it, that I'm actually working backwards from what we did before. Before we had a number outside of parentheses and we multiplied it. Now we're going to say, let's go backwards. What number was multiplied here? So we want to look at our first, our this binomial here. And I have 8a to the fourth minus 2a cubed. Start with the numbers. What is the common factor between the two numbers? I have 8 has a factor of 1 and 8, 2 and 4. 2 has just a factor of 1 and 2. So my common factor with the numbers is 2. So I would write a 2. I now look at my variables. I have a to the fourth, a cubed. 
All right, what is the what is the exponent that is in both of these? And I need to remember that a to the fourth can be rewritten as a cubed times a. So the common factor in the variables then is a cubed. So out here beside my number two, I will write a cubed. Now I'm going to put a parenthesis because I'm looking for what did it look like before. If I take 8a to the fourth and mentally divide that by 2a cubed, 8 divided by 2 is 4. a to the fourth divided by a cubed, subtract your exponents. 4 minus 3 is 1, so I'm left with a factor of a here. Over here I have a minus 2a cubed. Well, I have 2a cubed on the outside. So a number divided by itself always equals 1, so I have minus 1. So uh, this is now factored. It is undistributed. I've taken the common factor of 2a cubed out of each of the terms in the binomial. So if I mentally was to remultiply this to check this, this is how you check it. 2 times 4 is 8. a cubed times a is 8 to the 4th. So if I'm checking this mentally, I'm going to take this times this. I'm just going to distribute. And I have 8. And a cubed times a is a to the 4th. And then I take 2a cubed times negative 1, and I'm just going to write minus 2a cubed. Now, does this look like my first line? Yes, it does. And since that is that is matched that way, then that means I have undistributed, or I have factored this binomial correctly. Over here in the green, I have a trinomial for you. Always when you have more than two terms, you want to make sure that you look in all terms. Is there something I can factor out of every single term? So let's look at this trinomial. I have 6x squared plus 9 plus 15x. Now, knowing you guys, I am very sure you've looked at this already, and you've decided the greatest common factor is 3. And that's what I see when I look at this. I see a common factor of 3. Because I have the factors of 6 are 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, 3, and 6. The factors of 9 are 1, 3 times 3, and 9. And the factors of 15 are 1, 3, 5 and 15. So the greatest common factor numerically is the 3. That's the one that's in all three lists. So I'm going to write a 3. Let's check out the x variable. x squared, no x in the middle term, and just an x here. Since there's not an x variable in the middle term, there is no common factor of x. I'll put my parentheses now to say, all right, if I now mentally divide each term by 3, what is left behind? 6 divided by 3, that's 2. So I will write 2x squared. 9 divided by 3, that's 3. 15 divided by 3, that's 5. I'm not dividing anything by x, so I must write down the 5x. I have now factored this trinomial. I've taken the common factor out of all three terms and written it on the outside. And this is what this trinomial looked like before somebody multiplied each of those terms by 3. So if I mentally want to redistribute that and check it, 3 times 2 is 6, so I'd have 6x squared. 3 times 3 would be 9. And 3 times 5x would be plus 15x. Does the black line look like what's in green? And yes, it does. That means I have factored that trinomial correctly. So when you're factoring up a polynomial, we want to check all our terms, take out every single common factor that there is. We're going to put parentheses. And then mentally, we divide each term by the common factor. What is remaining goes inside the parentheses like this. All right, lastly, we have something that looks like this. 2 times x minus 5 plus 3a times x minus 5. So what if I had a binomial that looked like this instead. 3y plus, oops, my fault. Let me start that over. Sorry about that. That isn't what I want to write. Okay. So if I had 2y, this is what I want to write. 2y plus 3ay. Now, based upon what I just showed you before, look at the two terms here. What is the common factor here? The common factor is y. It's the only thing that's in common. 2 and 3 do not have any common factors other than 1. And there's only a, there's a variable a in the second term, but not in the first. So the common factor here is y. So y, parentheses, 2y divided by y is 2. 
3ay divided by y leaves 3a. So now I have this common factor of y out here, and I have 2 plus 3a left. So how does this help us with what I have written over here in blue? When you have x minus 5 inside parentheses, you must remember that this represents a single variable, a single number. So over to the right here, I wrote y instead of x minus 5. Now I have x minus 5. And when I see these problems, I always remember x minus 5 is a single number. So this is like 2 times a number plus 3 times a times another number. So when I look at this, is there a common factor there? The common factor is what's inside the parentheses x minus 5. So since x minus 5 is the common factor, I write parentheses x minus 5 plus, and now over here we wrote 2 plus 3a. I will also write 2 plus 3a. If I knew what this 3a represented, I would add it to 2, but I don't. So I write it this way to say that if I knew what 3a was, I would add it to 2. But since I don't, I leave it written this way. So I have my common factor of x minus 5, and then I have 2 plus 3a, which I would add together if I could, but I can't. So I just leave it as 2 plus 3a. If you have any questions on that, please pause the video, have me come over, and we'll take a look at it with you. Okay, lastly, factoring by grouping. Now, this is something you're going to use quite a bit the rest of the school year. Uh, we'll be using these ty this type of grouping and factoring probably from now through May in different assignments and, and with different concepts. So if you have any troubles with this, you need to let me know because I don't want you going on until you have this down. All right, factoring by grouping. As I mentioned a little bit ago, when you have a polynomial, we want to look at all terms to see if there is a common factor. All right, this has four terms in it, a cubed plus 2a squared plus 5a plus 10. Is there any common factor in the four terms besides one? When I look at this, I don't see one. I see a one. there's a 1 here, a 2, a 5, and a 10. Common factor, the factors of 1 are 1 and 1. 2 is 1 and 2. 5, the factors of 5 are 1 and 5. The factors of 10 are 1, 2, 5, and 10. The only common factor is 1. Looking at your variables, notice the last term doesn't have a variable. So there is not a common factor for all four terms. Factoring by grouping says this, that now what we're going to do is we're going to look and we're going to group pairs. So we're going to look here at a cubed plus 2a squared, and then I have plus 5a plus 10. So I will group these into two binomials, and I'll ask and look for common factors here. Looking at these two terms, I have a cubed plus 2a squared. There is a common factor here. The common factor happens to be a squared. a cubed, to remind you, is the same as a squared times a. So both of these have a factor of a squared. I will take that factor out. I will divide both terms by a squared, and I'm going to put a parenthesis. a cubed divided by a squared. 3 minus 2 is 1. Leaves just a. Plus, the second term has a, has a factor of a 2a squared divided by a squared. Well, a squared is factored out, so a squared divided by a squared equals 1. It leaves just the number 2. So I have a squared times a plus 2. Let's take a look now at the second grouping. I have a 5a plus 10. 5a plus 10. What is the common factor here? The common factor happens to be the number, the number 5. So I have a positive 5 that is a common factor. I'm going to write that on the outside. And I say 5, parenthesis, take 5a divided by 5, it leaves a. 10 divided by 5, it leaves 2. Now what you'll notice here is what we had just a second ago in the last problem, where now I have a common factor of a plus 2 in parentheses. If I knew what these two terms were, I'd add them together. You know that if you have... 3x plus 5x, we would take and say, hey, we're going to do 3 plus 5, and we're going to take that times x, and we would say 8x. Well, it's the same thing here. I will write parenthesis, and if I knew what a squared was, I would add it to 5, and we can do this 
because they have the common factor of a plus 2. So I write it like this. Now I have a binomial times a binomial, which is what you were multiplying when you foiled or you drew your rectangular boxes back in lesson 5-4. So now we have worked the problem backwards. If I was to distribute this, if I take a look at it, let's distribute it to check it to make sure. a squared times a is a cubed. a squared times 2 is plus 2a squared. 5 times a plus 5a. And 5 times 2 plus 10. Do I have what I had in the original line? Yes, I do. So that means I factored this correctly right here. So I have a binomial times a binomial. Let's look at this fob four term polynomial. I have pq plus 3p minus q minus 3. The only common factor in the numbers is 1. There are no common variables through all four terms. So when you have a four-term polynomial, let's do factoring by grouping. One of your groupings is going to be right here, pq plus 3p. Notice I did that with the first two terms. And then the next common factor grouping is a minus q minus 3. All right, looking at the first two terms, can you look at that and decide what's the common factor? When I look at it, I see that there is a common factor of P. So I will pull factor that out. I will say P, that's the only common factor, parenthesis, PQ divided by P leaves Q. 3P divided by P leaves plus 3. Now I look at these two terms. I have a negative and a negative. When I see a negative and a negative here, I'm knowing that I'm going to probably pull out a factor of negative 1. So I remove negative 1 from both factors. When I do that, I want to look and see, can I get a factor of q plus 3? Because that's the common factor I'm going to be after. So if I remove, if I factor out negative 1, minus 1, parentheses, negative q divided by negative 1, these a positive q. Negative 3 divided by negative 1. Positive 3. Now let's look at our, our terms here. p times q plus 3 minus 1 times q plus 3. You notice I have now created a common factor between the two. And if I knew what p represented, I would subtract 1 from it. But since I don't, I will write it down as a binomial. I'll say p minus 1 is then multiplied by q plus 3. And I get that. All right. And if I was to again FOIL, just to check it, if I want to FOIL to check that, I'll have P times Q, PQ. P times 3 will give me plus 3P. Three, three Negative 1 times Q, minus 1Q. Negative 1 times 3. Negative 3. And I do have what I had up in my original line up here. So I have that means I have factored this four-term polynomial correctly. All right, your assignment will look like this right here. It is assignment. It's page 295. It's numbers 5, 7, 11 through 15, 19 through 22, 25, 27, 29 to 32. All right, thanks, and let me know whatever questions you have. I would be happy to help you out.